Hi guys, a 2 1 win for the Saints against Bowles. I'm absolutely chuffed with it because it came, the way it came in the last minute, it's it's great when you get to see that because it doesn't really happen that often. And um, the first half I thought was a strange one, it was a bit cagey. Two teams trying to suss each other out a bit. Bowles get a penalty and they miss it, which I think was a kind of justice here because it didn't seem, it seemed like a very harsh penalty on Bermo. And like the Pats team seemed fairly incensed over it, and I didn't see many shouts or hear many shouts from the Bowles players or management. Maybe there was one or two, but I didn't see that many. If it had been that late, you probably would have seen more. So then, second half was kind of similar to the fourth half. We kind of set off a bit, but then we got forward and Matty Smith scored, which was great. Um, I think the introduction of Benson really changed the game too. Then I thought we'd when we went to goal up, I thought we were gonna go on and win it by maybe two or three because we had the momentum, but. Balls get a penalty to equalise. You have to fail for Mountney. You get stuck in that position. You're nine times out of ten you're gonna end up fouling someone. It just happened to him that it was in the box. They seemed adamant it was outside the box, but again, we'll watch yellow wine. I show him replays. You can't see. So after the equalise, I just thought we were gonna settle for the draw because this he didn't seem like there was much time left. And even though there's probably three or four minutes, you still think that's not enough. Get forward, we get a penalty, and Benson. I I'm chuffed he he was there to take it because he's fairly good from the spot as he used to see at when he played for Dundalk and UCD but it's just his character in the team we didn't get out of second gear again we let balls of a lot of play and we still ended up winning that's a lot of character and it's something we've been missing over the past few couple of years so hopefully that's a sign that we can start building form again like a tough defeat to Rovers two weeks ago that we probably didn't deserve to lose so I don't think we did just a mistake by Desmond and Andrew scores and then I think Drogheda were just a lot Better than us, kind of last week. A weird one. I don't think we're an awful lot better. Like, you can see the free kick, then a, a class goal, and then you get caught when you're two one down on the break to make a three one. It's it's a it's a bit kind of unjust, but hopefully that's um a sign of good form, excellent character from the team again, um, and on to Derry next week. Thanks very much, everyone. Yeah, I think it's probably a disappointing night for balls. I think we dominated possession by and large. The first half, uh, first 20 minutes was more or less all balls. Second, end, second part of the first half got a bit scrappy and everything. Both teams really got their foot holding the ball. Pats may have shaded it, but even then I don't think they were overly impressive throughout the whole game. Second half then, I don't think that uh, Pats really got a kick. You know, the goal was against the run of play. Bit of bad Bohemians defending. I think Kieran Kelly drops off there. He's way out of position. He's probably he's, he's holding Matty Smith on side, and as well as that, he's nowhere near him. So Matty Smith gets a free run in on goal, and look, man of his quality is going to take the chance. I feel that maybe as the week goes on, I know George Kelly can be seen as a scapegoat, but at the end of the day, he's not putting away his chances. You know, you have a penalty 12 yards out. Like, I'm not going to fucking crucify anyone for missing a penalty. You know, Messi misses them, Ronaldo misses them, but... Fucking, you know, when people when fans are at their throat already, you do have to put those chances away. He had a header in the second half as well. He really should have scored. And look, I, I don't think Charles can leave you at the club next year. I really hope he does prove us all wrong. But it's it's not looking good for for Bowles in the attacking areas. You know, if it looks like if Porter Q isn't scoring, it doesn't look like we're getting goals so much elsewhere. I know Port is brilliant tonight. I thought thought he was very good. Q I thought it was, a bit, it was a bit redundant tonight. Maybe the toy pitch probably didn't help him in that regard, as he likes to play with a bit of space. And then again, you have to give Pats credit for not letting him play. On the Pats side of things, eh, I suppose when Bowles had such a bad start, you'd nearly hope Pats might push fucking Rovers for a potential title charge. Obviously, the Bowles, you don't want to see them win it, but I don't think Pats are going to be near. They don't, really don't look like fucking the team looking in the league. So, hopefully now Bowles can kick back on Monday and we can get a result against them, Doc. Uh, full time Blues nil Derry won. Um, disappointing result, um, especially with the amount of chances they created to not score is very disappointing. Uh, it is difficult to look on the positive side, but there is one, and you know they played much better in the first game under Burton than I've seen them play in any game uh, under CD, especially given the amount of injuries there were to the squad or testing, I suppose, whatever they want to say. Um, but. Yeah, the goal they gave up as well, I thought, was very soft. Uh, and to concede it so early on was, uh, uh, you know, it, it's not good. Um, it is the first game, though, 
under a new manager uh, we've taken that into account and uh you know i i think uh i think bertram still uh will prove that uh he was the right appointment uh to make but um you know it's it's going to take some it's going to take something uh, you know to go their way i still think for the potential for the squad to be unlocked, they're gonna have to get something to go their way. And uh, tonight, this is just an example of you know nothing really went their way. So um, yeah, on to Finn Harps on Monday. I think this is a game they can get something out of. Um, but uh, I, you know, it just uh, you know to to say the same thing again, like you know something's gonna have to happen. They're gonna have to get a lucky goal or uh, you know um, uh, rubber the green in some way. So. Uh, yeah, uh, kind of apathetic at this point, really, you know, uh, lost so often. But, uh, you know, I suppose they played better than they did in previous losses, so maybe that's something. So, just after watching Sligo Rovers v Longford Town there, uh, fantastic three points. I thought they very well-deserved three points as well. Um, I thought Longford, to be fair to them, started off the better team. First 15 minutes, controlled the game quite well, controlled the tempo of the game, had a couple of chances... Nothing really on target to test McGinty, but you know they were looking the brighter side, and um, you know for us with Bulge and Collie out, I was kind of getting a bit worried, worried that um, our midfield would be overrun. But to be fair, Rovers they really came into it after that. Figueroa finally got the opener, fantastic strike to go one 0 up, and after that I don't think we ever kind of looked back. We never looked like we were going to concede. I thought Buckley at the back very composed. McCourt as well had a fantastic game. I think Walter Figueroa got the goal. I think it's his best performance in a rover shirt this season. Thought he was absolutely phenomenal today. Uh, Niall Morhan as well was very, very good. Uh, controlled the first half quite well. A um, couple of chances going astray a wee bit, but you know overall we did quite well. I thought the Vries coming back uh, into the starting lineup. He looked very sharp, sharper than he has done in a couple of weeks. So that's great news for us. Gives Buckley another option as well to think about going forward. Um, second half we started off quite well again. You know applied the pressure straight away and we got a corner. Uh, nothing came from it though, but you know it kind of it kind of really showed what the second half had to offer for us. Um, very well, very well, um, very well played by Gibson for the second goal, um, winning the penalty and then scoring it. I thought it was fantastic, top right corner, um, or top left corner even, and um, you know we never kind of looked back. We never looked like we were conceding. Very composed at the back, midfield. We kind of won the midfield battle. Uh, Longford, they did have a couple of chances, um, but nothing kind of really that tested McGinty. Um, overall, I thought we played quite well, um, especially you know with Bulger and Collie missing. I was really kind of nervous for the game, I suppose, because I knew Longford were going to come to the showgrounds and try to play, and they did for the first fifteen minutes. To be fair to them, they're look they're a good football inside, might not deserve to where to be where they are in the league, um, but you know. If they can play like they did today, I'm sure they'll get some results and hopefully stay up because they're a good football and time a team. Um, overall, though, I thought we deserved the three points. Played quite well. Figueroa for me, man of the match, along with Buckley at the back, fantastic, very very composed uh, as usual. That's what you expect. He's just been fantastic this season. Um, yeah, so it's a big three points. Looking forward to now to uh, the Shams game on Monday. If we can get a result there, who knows what we can do this season? We've been absolutely fantastic this season. Uh, it's great to see. It's fantastic just to see a, bright, a new team playing football, um, looking very, very bright, and the future is very bright for Rovers. Final score tonight from Finn Park. Drop as he had one. Finn Harpsnell uh, got it here at the, right, at the moment. Uh, kick. Last kick the game to win the match. Overall, it's a hard to deserve to win the game. Uh, Mark McGinley made four fantastic saves the whole game. Harps didn't really create that much. Fun is a very tight game. Uh, two sends off in the match. Two very soft red card for Heaney. Sorry, got a full red card. And we actually got the uh, red card for Harps after two yellow bookings. Uh, great free kick by Massey to win the game. Fought Ron Murray. Control of the midfield for Drogheda. Um, Harps didn't really go to the traps this evening. Wasn't, or, wasn't a great performance by us. Um, Got it right now, <laughs> as you can see in my face. Um, last kick of the game, can't come back from that. Um, overall, it wasn't meant to be. Uh, it's an interesting league that so far. Uh, Dundalk beating Sean Rovers tonight. Uh, I think you have remarks to them, what the protesting going on, and 
Rovers losing their first game for over 30 matches or something to get. That's what he probably said I think that tonight. And with Derry one on as well, it's a bit of a kick on the you know what. Uh, all I can say is uh, uh, Waterford now Monday night and <laughs> uh, the Derby match next weekend. Uh, keep your chin up. We'll have these nights uh, like everybody else um, up the harps. I won a win over Haps. What result? Day Massey. Fucking what a man. <laughs> what a free kick last minute. Um uh, it was a it was a poor game from both sides. We were we were no one here. Uh you know, neither from Haps. You know, I think you know, I think chances really came from corner kicks, to be totally honest with you. There were more chances from corner kicks than there was, you know, any other free play. Um you know, Bohemi and Webster sent off. Webster sent off there last minute, which you know gave Massey the chance to score the goal, and thankfully he did. But yeah, man, I'm just I'm just buzzed after that. What a result to keep ourselves in fourth place. You know, um, four points I believe now off in Haps. Um, ah, look, just class and boys. You know, I think look, the performance wasn't wasn't good today. I think that's probably the worst performance of the year. I think other than. I think Bowles, I think Bowles, better form was a Bowles than it was uh, tonight, but look, I think all the matters now is we come away with three points, it doesn't matter how you get as long as you get the win, you know, and um, thankfully, thankfully we did there um, from the free kick. Um, look, I mean, I think Gary Deegan missing tonight was, was huge as well because I think the midfield was just woeful tonight, I think he would have controlled the midfield better now if he was playing, but unfortunately he was suspended, but you know, no chance for Mark though either, you know, I think the defence is... You know, to be honest, the defence was, was strong tonight as well. Um, O'Reilly and Massey and, and Phillips at the back. There's some brilliant stuff there from the, from the defenders. And um, another one there on Monday against Longford. That's another big one. You know, how, we know Longford. I think Longford lost 2 0 tonight against Sligo. You know, so they are. I think it was 13, 13 points ahead of them now in the, the table. So, look, looking forward to So it's full time at Talca Park and it finished Shelburne 3, UCD 1. It was a really, really good game uh, for the Shelburne side of things. They played some fantastic football from start to finish. Shelburne were the first off the mark with a great goal from J.R. Wilson. Uh, really, really well worked cross. He did really well to catch it at the far post. Um, and then only about two or three minutes after that, Ryan Brennan uh, got, a, got a header that was crossed into him. Did really, really well to make it 2-0 in quick succession. UCD pulled a goal back after a free kick with O'Brien uh, to finish it off. He probably got too much space inside the box, but did really well to find the top right-hand corner. After that, Shells really pushed on. Ryan Brennan with another goal to make it 3-1. Did clash with the keeper after putting it in the back of the net. Both players were down. Thankfully, they were fine to carry on. Um, and it just went like that till the rest of the game. The second half, there wasn't much. Uh, going on but Shelburne definitely controlled the play and I think it's a real testament that Shelburne did really really well they're the only team now to be undefeated in the first division and they showed their class today played some really really good football and deserved the three points that's it hey guys uh, just finished watching uh, Bray against a way to extra to Bray Carry Park 1-0 uh, win for Bray wasn't a great game by all accounts Um Ray dominated uh, the first half. Uh, lots of shots on uh, at the goal, but nothing that troubled um, Corcoran in the Rexford goal. Um, it's a tough place to go, Ferry Carrick Park and Bray have struggled a, a good few times there, but uh, they eventually took the lead uh, on 43 minutes. A uh, slip on the Wexford left uh, allowed Brandon Cabinet to take possession and he crossed the ball for Joe Doyle. Joe controlled the ball and to the net. Um, that gave Bray one 0 half time lead. And to be honest, not a lot happened in the second half. Uh, it was good to see Gary Shaw coming off the bench again. Um, continued his recovery from injury. Uh, and Bray's game management um, was quite impressive. So uh, they didn't really threaten much in the second half. Neither did Wexford. Um, so kind of a comfortable win for Bray uh, into the playoffs, into fifth place. Um, I know 
some results tonight, Cork won all, so uh, with Galway that's a good result for Bray. And you've had to say to me before the Galway game, before Bray played in Galway, that Bray would be uh, two points two points off second place. Um, as of the first series of games, um, I would have I would have laughed at you because um, we obviously had drawn six six of our uh, first seven games um, or five of our first six games, but it's it's good momentum builder. Um, that's three wins on the trot now, and we got the treaty uh, to kick off our second series of games. So uh, we'll see we'll see what happens. But um, yeah, finished. Uh, Wexford FC Neil Bray Wanderers one. Hi Keith, um, just finished watching our game there against Galway United. Um, disappointing considering like we played well, especially the first half, first forty five minutes. Thought we were bright, energetic, passed the ball around well, um, like put Galway in the back foot a lot, pressed them high, um, and kind of what we done is we frustrated Galway. Um, and as I expected, Conor McCormack, ex City player, who was fantastic, cut got the first booking, uh, which he does. He never holds back anyway. So we played well, looking good anyway. And then Galway, the player sent off. I did look back at it there, but it was very hard to tell what actually happened. Uh, I did, it looked more like an accident from what I saw, but maybe there was a bit of intention there. He was sent off just before half time, and I said to myself, I said, in normal circumstances. If you had an experienced team, like City would have used their just intelligence there in the second half, you know, could have pressed Galway higher in the second half. But Galway, with John Caulfield being a manager and his experience done the right thing, basically what they done was they wasted a lot of time in the second half. And, you know, they frustrated City by... Kind of like we say, if City won a throw or if City got a free kick, they kicked, up, they'd hold on to the ball for as long as they could have kicked the ball away. What was happening was that the City players were reacting by getting stuck into them, and that's all Galway wanted. This was like great, you know, it was into their hands. Um, and I was saying, geez, look, just try and be patient and pass the ball around. Got a great goal there from Jack Baxter. He had an excellent game, lovely ball. Ball came out from on the edge of the box, caught the ball in the volley from about twenty-five yards. Great goal. Um, Himself and Garrod Morrissey. Garrod Morrissey had a great game. He came back tonight after a couple of weeks out injured. Himself and Jack Baxter were standing in midfield. Um, and looking at a couple of players left the stone again tonight. Um, and then, like, City shouldn't have given away a goal 87 minutes. Hold your, hold your ground for five minutes, you know. Just try and be a bit patient for five minutes. And, you know, giving away a goal from a corner, which was stupid. They had the extra man. And they, they couldn't mark him, like, you know, just, like, if I was Colin Healy, I'd be fucking killing him. I'd be tearing the head off him, like, I'd have him training tomorrow, and I'd have him training hard for losing a game like that, which they could have easily went on to win the game, and they could have won 2 or 3 nil if they used their heads, you know, but not, so they got stuck up in the hole, like, they did, Galway just used, done, done the right thing by... Uh, wasting time and City just started fighting with him and you could see that was playing into Galway's hands and John Caulfield was probably smiling at that and it worked out well for Galway disappointingly like if we got three points there we'd have been only I know an old son's kind of it, it, it son's oh, what's the word um, easy to say or whatever but like we'd have been only five points off second place you know because that's how tight the league is but look it, that's not the point we didn't get three points we got a point uh, and um, you know that's the way it was. And look, anybody there as well who's watching the commentary there, uh, I look, I'm not going to say anything. But our League of Ireland commentary there, it's fucking painful. The two lads who are doing it, like, um, you know, it's fucking, you know, the two boys who give Annette in a headache. It's like a chat instead of actually reporting on the games, like fun times that they had together or something like that. Like it's very annoying. Um, so yeah, so yeah, it looked disappointing. Um, and that's all I can do is just learn from what from those t those mistakes they made, not, just not using their head, just lack of intelligence and experience. I'm um, sorry, Miss. Last week I had that uh, COVID uh, Indian variant that was made up. That C one two eight four seven bullshit. Thanks, Keith. Hey guys, just after watching the Doc Shamrock Rovers game, there very good game, very interesting game, I have to say. Uh, first half, 
I didn't get to see much of it to be honest. Uh, my don't know how everyone else was, but my watch out away was first half hour of the game was glitching, freezing, this kind of like stop motion. So I didn't really see, actually miss the two goals in the first half, which was very annoying as you can imagine. But uh, from what I've seen of it and what I've heard from text my uncle and that, uh, Rovers were the better team, I think, in the first half, hit the post and just dominated Dundalk. But then Dundalk grew into the second half, especially now I've seen the whole thing of that. Very uh, Kelly took his goal very well. Uh, yeah, he had it, had it lovely. I think it was, it was good for him to be getting back in the, goal, the score sheet after being out injured for so long. I think Zahibo had a very good game as well, as, along with uh, Sam Stanton. Stamp, he played out of his socks today, boy. He was very good up and down the field, all, all over the place. So he was a uh, wee bit of cramp, though. I think that's just he hasn't had many minutes in, in him, but. Uh, yeah, so Shamrock Rovers undefeated streak anyway has come to an end in Oriel Park. It's a shame the fans couldn't have been in the ground to see that one. Though we would have absolutely loved it. And now uh, like, we're not going to go and say we're going to go on and win the league now, but we pre- push on. I hope that gives us a very good kickstart because I, I feel like it's, we grew into that game on in the second half, I think we were the better side. We deserved the three points at the end of it. I was from the second half, forced Rovers to play a lot of long balls and hitting hopes, really. I think yeah, they had some very good chances, obviously, they hit the post a couple of times, but Dundalk hit them very well in the break. I think that was a game plan, anyways. Duffy and McMillan and Kelly. Uh, all very fa- fast guys, especially the two wingers, very fast. Was, obviously, we were going to be trying to hit them on the break, and it worked out very nicely. So hopefully now, yeah, we'll press on from that, get a manager going in, and press on. That's all we can do. Let's really hope. Hopefully, we can do that now. Thanks very much. Full times just gone there in Oriel Park. Dundalk have beaten the Tordy Tree game and beaten Shamrock Rovers. So it uh, credit where credit's due to Dundalk tonight. They played really well. Although Rovers did play well in certain patches, Dundalk played really well tonight. It's probably the best I've seen them this season. That's not knocking them. I think um, out of the four games I've watched them, that this game was really a showing of how good Dundalk can be when they get the ball down and just play. And I know they are missing a few lads tonight, but it really shows like the difference when Rovers are missing a few lads tonight and our bench is full of teenagers like 19 year olds 18 year olds i think the oldest player on our bench bar leon Powell's was uh dan williams and he's 21 22 like i'm not making excuses for the side because listen it takes the invincible tag and it takes it's a kick up the arse for this rover side that we haven't got really look i know there's been many games this season where we haven't played our best but we still got results but i think this the kick in the arse this rover side has needed and I genuinely believe that will kick on now. Hopefully against Sligo. Um, the first goal in the night was scored by Patrick McElhenney in the 11th minute. Um, it was a, basically a rinse and repeat of the fourth goal in the cup final. Um, by Dundalk by Macmillan. But just a different player. Uh, Roberts pushed Manny forward for the corner. And were left lacking at the back. Um, I think it was either Michael Duffy or Daniel Kelly. Who sliced the ball through the Roberts defence. To leave in McElhinney and even though Pico did get back and managed to get a foot in, it wasn't enough to stop the ball going to the top corner. A lovely finish by a good player. Um, Rovers equalised two minutes later through a fumble in the six-yard box by the Dundalk keeper who fell into the foot of Joey O'Brien. Um, Joey, 26 or 27 now and still getting a goal and fair play to him. He's probably one of the players I like the most out of this side because he's genuine. Um, so it's delighted for him to get the goal. Um, bar that really, up until half time, there wasn't really many chances. A few hitting the crossbar, a few hitting the post, and a few going over the bar sometimes. But when the second half kicked off, it was really the game came back into life. Um, Aaron Green lobbed the keeper, and only for a little, admitted by the ex Dundalk keeper retired now, Gary Rogers, only for the bobble in the pitch. That that ball would have went in. Um, Graham Book hit the post in in around the fifty fourth or fifty fifth minute, which I thought went in. And for both chances, I said I celebrated because I thought he hit the back in there. Now I know in hindsight, looking back at it now, I shouldn't celebrate until the ball has actually hit the back of the net. But I just got overconfident and cocky. Um, but 
Dundalk equal uh Dundalk got the the goal ahead in the fifty ninth minute through Daniel Kelly. Um Andrew tried to play a Hollywood ball like he did all night and although a lot of them did pay off, this one didn't. Fell into the foot of either I think Stanton or McElhenney, who then played the outside onto the wing and whipped in and Daniel Kelly took one touch and blasted it towards the net. Went through Alamance's hands and went into the top of the roof of the net. Um, a good goal, but I think Rovers had a lack of concentration there. And I also think, and I'm not being critical of the player because I love him as a player, but in this game and in many games this season, Lee Grace has been ball watching. He done it, I pointed out, in the Bowers watch along that I was on five or six times that night he was ball watching. But it really showed tonight he wasn't great, but I'm not knocking him as a player because he, it's just a bad patch of games. And I know that he was still playing with a knock at the start of the season, so I don't know whether that's still hindering him now. But when you look at the benches tonight, and I'm not making an excuse for Alvarez, but the eldest player we had on our bench bar keep, I was 22 years old, and Dundalk had fair enough lads unknown to the league, but... Still a decent standard of football that to bring off the bench, even the likes of Greg Slager, who would be known to the league. But all in all, uh, the Invincible tag and the Torch 3 game being streak, I'm very proud of. And uh, nobody can take this away from this Ralph So the Torch 3 unbeaten record now it has to be broken by a side, whether that be in the next five years, ten years, or so many years, as we've seen that Ralph's broken 90, 93 or 94 year old record this year by doing this. So um, I'm overall proud of this side for doing that, but I think this is the kick in the ass that we've needed and I hopefully wish we push on on Monday and be Sligo and get the run of form up until the mid-season break and then when we come back, one or two games and then Richie's in. So all in all, a good game by two good sides who played all right on the night, but on that got the, the better of us tonight and I accept that. Um, that's it. And anyways, cheers.